All right, everybody. So when I said next level, I meant, you know, this is where we're going to be trying to do this for the general case here. Note that we have our points X1, Y1, X2, Y2 here, and we're going to divide this segment into a P to Q ratio. So this is going to be, you know, just giving you fair warning at the beginning here. This is going to be very heavily algebra based. So hold on to your hats. All right, so you know we take some inspiration from what came before. We're gonna go ahead and sketch ourselves our triangles just like before, right? We can create similar triangles like this. So I can go ahead and uh, do the same thing we did in the previous situation here. But now we're gonna set this up like so, so that now there's gonna be a lot more numbers we don't know. So here's our point C. This is again gonna be x2 comma y1. I think you can see that here. We got a right angle here. And I'm going to look at this point here. I'm going to call this here D, okay? Now, it makes sense here that for K, what we're going to be doing is, so in this situation here, right, for point K, it makes sense that we're going to be looking at X, we're going to be looking at this here. Also, sorry, uh, let me go ahead and sketch this as well. It's our horizontal like so. So we can see that in this situation, here's our point E, okay? So before we even do anything here, we note that in this situation, we can go ahead and fill in some things here, right? We know D is on the same horizontal line, so Y1 is going to be the Y coordinate here, and E is going to be over here. It's the same idea. It's going to be X2. Okay. Now, knowing what's going on here, it makes sense that point K is going to be point A, and then we're going to add AD and DK here. We're going to go to the right AD, uh, the distance AD, and we're going to go up the distance DK here. So that means it makes sense here that this is going to be x1 plus ad comma y1 plus dk i don't know what those are but once i do find expressions for ad and dk then i can add them to this and then we're going to be in good shape here okay so again we're going to note here that we have ourselves similar triangles yet again we know that in this situation we have akd here this triangle should be similar to the big triangle here abc and again, you can see because we have two right triangles, they share this angle over here. It makes sense that these are going to be similar to one another. Okay. Now, note that the scale factor here is going to be a little bit different, right? We saw with before the scale factor here was numbers. You know, we had one to four, we had a one to three ratio. Now we have a p to q ratio. So note that the scale factor is actually not going to be p to q because p to q compares to part to part. We're comparing this small triangle to the big triangle here. So the scale factor is not p to q, it's actually p to p plus q. And this is going to be important here. That scale factor is going to help us out immensely. Now, if you remember what we did before, again, we're going to go ahead and set this up here. We can go ahead and take a look at each of the legs of the triangle. So this triangle here, right, if you recall from when we talked about the distance formula, we saw that each of the legs can be expressed as the difference between the coordinates here. So in this case, this is x2 minus x1 here, and this is going to be y2 minus y1. Okay, now, again, noting the scale factor of this here, we can now start to figure out what AD is. So if we go to our picture here, we can go ahead and write this out. We know AD here is going to be equal to, well, notice that AD here, this PK, AK was P over P plus Q of AB. So by you know the correspondence of these sides here, AD will be that same scale factor of AC here. So in this situation, we can say that AD is going to be P over P plus Q times the scale times AC here. So I can rewrite this as P over P plus Q times X2 minus X1, okay? So that's going to be the length of AD here. And that we're going to add to X1 here when we finish up. By the same token, we can do the same thing here for KD here, right? KD, notice that KD, I'm going to do this. For, uh, notice that here we have a rectangle DKEC here. So KD is going to be equal to EC. That's pretty easy. And again, it's going to be the same idea. This KD here is P over P plus Q of the entire triangle. So it's going to be P over P plus Q times, in this case, BC, which is P over P plus Q times Y2 minus Y1. Okay? So. Note the picture is actually already taken. We've already done a lot with the picture already here, in fact, right? We have this. Now, technically, I can go ahead and write this out here. I can write this. I can write this here. But I'm going to leave it like that because if you think about what's going on here, we're going to have to add this to. So basically, this x1 plus ad here, I have to add this to x1. The y coordinate here, I have to add y1 to this quantity here. So now, that means the location of point k. So 
This is where the algebra comes in, the location of point K. Remember, this is the location of K. This is going to be the following here. It's going to be, let me make sure I got this here. This is going to be X1 plus AD, which is P over P plus Q times X2 minus X1, comma, and then we do the same thing. It's going to be Y1 plus P over P plus Q times Y2 minus Y1. Okay, so now the idea is let's simplify this. Let's try to make this a little easier to see. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at this. So now we have, okay, so this x1, this here, I can distribute this to each term. So this is going to be px2 over p plus q. And I can do the same thing here. There's going to be a minus px1 over p plus q here, right? We're just distributing this quantity here. And this is going to be comma. In this case, we can do the same thing here, y1 plus, again, py2 over p plus q minus py1 over p plus q here. Okay, so I got rid of one set of parentheses here, but this still doesn't look very good. Uh, we note that everything here has a p plus q denominator, but this y1 and x1 doesn't, so we might as well take care of that. Note that the coefficients of x1 and y1 are 1, and that's just p plus q over p plus q. So I can write this as p plus q times x1 all over p plus q plus, again, the other stuff. Now, if you're particularly sharp with your uh, algebra here, I think you're going to see what happens next. But if you're not, that's okay. Same thing is going to happen here. We're going to have p plus q times y1 all over p plus q. And again, we're just doing this here because p plus q over p plus q is 1, and that's the coefficient of these terms. Okay, so we have all this. So now I see another set of parentheses. Let's go ahead and distribute here. And the nice part about this is that all of these are all the same denominator here. So I can actually combine everything over a single denominator. So our single denominator is going to be P plus Q here. So now I can distribute this. This is going to be PX1 plus QX1 plus PX2 minus PX1. So I have four terms here all over P plus Q. The same is going to occur here as well. We're going to have P plus Q in the denominator, and we're going to distribute everything again. So it's going to be PY1 plus QY1 plus PY2 minus PY1. And now we can see that a lot of simplification, uh, a good chunk of simplification will occur. We see there's a PX1 and a minus PX1. These vanish. And we see there's a PY1 and a minus PY1. Those vanish as well. And we're actually left with something that looks relatively nice. So this, and if you remember way back, this is the location of point K here. So we now have a nice little way of determining the location of point K based on the information here. So that actually tells us something very important here, right? We actually just derived this. And as a result, we now have this here. So we've just shown our derivation that the location of a point K that divides a segment with endpoints A, X1, Y1, and B, X2, Y2, such that AK to KB is P to Q. Now, that's an important thing here. Note that AK to KB is P to Q here. Here's the P, here's the Q. If we were to switch the Q and the P here, that actually changes a lot of things. Notice the Q and P would switch over here. The scale factor would become different from Q over P plus Q, and that would change a bunch of things down here. Um, now, I do say it changes a bunch of things, but if you think about it, all it really does here is just swaps a bunch of things here. So, you know, the Qs and Ps just get swapped places here. The denominators don't change, but the numerators change a bit. So we end up with something that looks like this here, and this is going to be our location. Now, yes, it's a formula. Do I like the formula? Probably not. Um, note that if you remember what we just did in the previous video when we deal with similar triangles, it may be better to think of it with similar triangles because it's just easier to think of it that way, right? There's no need to memorize a formula like this. But if you like memorizing formulas, by all means, use this formula here. Just make sure you keep P and Q correct, okay? And also, you know, it's probably a better idea if you think about this here. Again, I highly suggest focusing on just thinking about similar triangles here. I just did this entire thing here to show you that we can do this with any sort of numbers here. And that's sort of the basis behind this idea of algebra here. And you're going to see this as we go along later on.